Good evening, everyone. My name is TJ, and today I will be interviewing Prince, Prince of the Underworld, a coach from Cornerstone League today. How are you doing? I'm doing all right, TJ. How about you? I'm doing fine. Thank you for checking in. It's just a it's just a little bit of a rainy day here, so I'm I'm, I'm uh, waiting, looking forward to uh, brighter days. <laughs> Anyways, so I like we you know we're we're in second week of playoffs, but um. Unfortunately, you were you were bounced out a, a little early. Um, we'll we'll talk about more about that later. Um, but uh, how did you feel about uh, this season of draft rig? Mainly being uh, the season before, I came in as a sub, so I didn't have much flexibility with my team and how to play out. But this time, being able to draft. To really plan out my team and just being able to play against so many great players it was amazing. Who do you think was like your your best player in your team? I know that you've, you've had a few people that did some work here in different weeks, but um, who do you think was your your best player? My best player, honestly, Gal Strada for me. Um, uh, or I nicknamed her Dancer. She for me was my best player always consistent and even if her performance wasn't um great in some games she always played some work so uh what was your so like you want to talk about your like your draft plan what was your like your, your draft plan going into this um uh, this season yeah. um i'm gonna be honest i didn't have a draft plan i just wanted to get such a mind that it's other leaders and that I've loved using. So I've loved using Meow Scarada, Mega Ampros, Pissuing Electro. Those are monsters that are very fun to use during draft that always put in good work. As for mods like Life Score, Aegis Flash, Hitmon Lee, Fryroar, for me, those are just mods that, good or bad, I love using. So I know that some sometimes uh, during the season we had people like drop or like people had to cancel and forfeit. Were you able to play like all of your matches this season? Yes, every single match I was able to play. That's good. Um, do you happen to have like a favorite match that you remember? I love to play Geek Fit Toast of the Great Plains. For me, that was one of my favorite matches in a sense where. I really needed to win. Mm -hmm. In terms of my playoff, still alive. Yeah. So it's just where I could just go in with my normal step. Where I had to play out of my mind and prep like crazy just to have a chance of winning. And at the very end, that's what it came up to. So, like, you want, let's talk about that match. Like, what was it like, um, your game plan and preparing for it. Like I can see that his team had um, Turtle and um, uh, Altaria, I guess Mega Altaria and then Sceptile. So for me, the main thing that threw my team for a loop was that big turtle. Yeah. Because that turtle is known far and wide to just ruin your day and the hurt. And then you add in something like Sceptile, mm -hmm. which is able to shed tail. Mm -hmm. And so if there's a free substitute, if you don't respond accordingly, you're screwed. So for me, my main idea was just try to put as much shit down as possible mm -hmm. to at least stop it. So I had Toxic Spikes, I had Will with Toxic. Um, I was using a whole bunch of pivots just to slow down his team because um, my main counter to it in Aegis Flash mm -hmm. was weak from the first power, which Tropagos always runs. Yeah. So yeah. I couldn't just do uh, some normal set. And then you had Mega Altaria who can sweep. Mm hmm. After going to Dragon Dance, you have a combination of return and Dragon 
Yeah, you know, like I'm watching like the beginning of the match, and you play you, the fact that you were able to just you know U turn perfectly pivot, and, and it didn't even have like a, any type of a recovery item, which I guess proves that it was definitely running like Shed Tail. Um, did you feel that was a very huge momentum change for you? Because because you're talking about how important it was to uh, prevent Shed Tail. Oh yes, 100. percent I am fairly confident if for some reason. Um, that if Seth Pyle was able to get off the shed tail, mm-hmm. I am very confident I wouldn't have won that game. Because substitute is such great mm-hmm. usefulness. Yeah, agreed. So, um, rapid spin, all that. And, and once it goes, and once it gets out of control, if you don't have something like Destiny Bond, yeah. uh, like a boy die, you lose I uh, say, so like, so like of um, of the people in like you know your your team, I'd say Fabio Megambros has been like my favorite like player to like watch and replays, um, and you've been able to use its agility set like pretty well. Um, you know, I know you said it's like one of your favorite Pokemon. Is there any particular reason why it's your favorite Pokemon? Is it going back to like a certain game you played, or just the design, or anything in particular? Um, Mega Ampros. Mm-hmm. I love it because of its design. In a sense where it's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you're adding a, you're adding hair to it, and somehow that makes it a drag. I always thought it was hilarious. Mm-hmm. But I've always thought of it as underrated as well because dragon electric typing is really good in scenarios where if you can't do the drag, something will soon to a lot. And adding in its monstrous special attack, it could rip your team. Yeah, I agree. Like the only thing that really is holding its back is its speed. Um, but I see that that's why you run the agility set, and you've been only using it, and you've been smart to like only bring it in scenarios where it can live. But going to talk about more about your team, like who do you think was like um, uh, who do you think like was the Pokemon you thought was like least valuable? I think one of your Pokemon didn't even get to play. I don't know if that was because it was a late ad or not. Is that really that um, it wasn't viable? But mm-hmm. is that every single match that I brought in, mm-hmm. I always thought a better counter. That mod was sadly Tink a ton. Oh, okay. Well, I want to use Tink a ton because that's another mod which I extremely love in a sense where you have this, it's a great typing of very steel. It's great moves of knockoff, ice, ice hammer, play rough, giga hammer. It has so many great moves and it's a great utility. However, for me, the fact that I had Aegis Slash on a team as a better skill type kind of just took it away. And of course, the only time I was able to use it was actually. In playoffs, because I wanted to give it a chance to defeat a Mega Latios. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Uh, that's too bad. Um, I guess that happens, right? Just like the matchups just don't really work well for it. For its favor, like, you know, like for you to bring it optimally. Um, but yeah, I, I think it, like, like you said, it has a lot of great utility and typing. It just, uh, I guess it just didn't work out for you in the, your scenarios. Um, Let's talk about now your uh, your playoff match. Um, it was it was a it was a close match. Um, you played, I believe. I'm just trying to remember the team name. You played against uh, ELS, right? Yeah, I played against ELS. Um, so let's talk about you know your preparation, like going into the match. Like, what was what was the what was what do you think was like the biggest threat on on the roster for? Uh, for that team, so the thing with ELS and Sirius and Cerise, mm-hmm. uh, I had actually faced them week two, so I was really nervous in the sense where they already know the six Pokemon that I use, yeah, mainly like that. And yeah. so, in the game prior, Mega Ampros and Hisuian Electrode caused them a lot of problems. And for me, my biggest problem was 
shine through their Toros Blaze, um, which was running a more defensive Intimidate set. And so while doing that, I the only reason I won that game as well was because of a Draco Meteor Miss on their Mega Latios or Latios. I forgot which one it was. And so in that case, I had to find a way to defeat Mega Latios, I believe, without having to rely on something like RNG. So, of course, my game plan was an AV Tinkaton that would be able to take out, would be able to take, of course, Luster Purge, um, Draco Meteors, all that, and be able to knock it back with Knock Off and Play Rock. Um, then I also had, of course, Mega Amphros and Hensuian Electrode back because it was such a big problem for them. Palafin, because he wasn't able to really do much in the previous game um, against ELS. Mascara, because Mascara is, for some reason, a great pick in any draft league, draft league game you go. And what was my final mod? I don't remember what my final bot was. So you had it. Yep, you had Gliscor. And Gliscor, because I love that mod, and I just want to see it at least defeat one Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Well, it, you had a really, like, in the beginning, you had a really good start. Um, it lost, I guess, one of its items in the beginning. But, um... Yeah, the the area this was funny, but also smart. In a sense where I knew it was going to lead, once I thought I know it was going to be a lead uh, Sticky Weber, mm -hmm. I did not expect at all that I was going to carry knockoff. Oh, yeah. Do you think um, that Defog was something that you should have had on one of your, on one, on, on, on Barbara, on Gliscor? Um, yes and no. In a sense where, yeah, if I was able to have, like, a fifth move slot, yeah. I would immediately put the fog. But um, with the set of dual wing beat, earthquake, agility, and sword dance, yeah. its main job just to stay alive as long as possible with, of course, what was supposed to be toxic or appealing. Yeah. And just defeat as much as he can, so I'm able to get something like Palafin or Mega Amphros to come in and finish up the job. I was very surprised that um, Nido King was able to like hit Amphros in like one one in like more or less like one hit. I would have thought for sure it would still have been able to live, but considering it's special defense. But um, I guess your thing was EV a special way for it to be more. Uh, like, more for a physical attack, right? Because <laughs> he brought all physical moves? Yeah, because my idea with Mega Amphros was that I can't really hit more or less Magirna mm -hmm. because Magirna loves using Calm Mind set. Yeah. And if it's able to get up to a Calm Mind, I wouldn't be able to really hit it back. Yeah. And another problem was that I had no way of doing super effective damage. Yeah. So I just uh, set up stomping tantrum, uh, breaking swipe, and thunder punch. Mm -hmm. And as a way of, if Zeraora comes out as I'm still in Ampharos, I mega, uh, I can mega evolve stomping tantrum, breaking swipe on Magirna, stomping tantrum on that. And so it was a really great counter. To a lot of mods that I didn't have much coverage for, and if I was getting a special move for. Yeah, it's just it's, it's a shame that um, I guess if I guess Gigaton would probably have done a good amount of damage against like some Majorana, but like all the other moves had like perfect utility reasons. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think there's it would so if you could make one change, you know, considering the outcome, what do you think it would be? I feel like not pressing Jet Punch on. Palafin mm -hmm. on the Needle King, that was that really doomed me in a sense where 
now that I think about it, I could have done a a good amount of damage. I would have killed the Needle King if he if he would have gone in to snap to sack Magirna, That was yeah. great. Um, but even not even if he sends in the Zero Aura, Jet Punch will still do a lot. Yeah, and since Gal Scarlet was scarred, it um it would be able to take a hit from Hidden Power Zero Aura. I I believe it was Hidden Power Fighting. I want to say. Or I'm like, it's either I. I think it's like I think it's like ice or fire because like it was super effective against grass, uh, masquerade and grass for gr- grass protean. Oh yeah, but then I would have probably had the chance to kill. Yeah. Um, zero. I agree. And then Magdalena was so low health that I doubt it would live <laughs> unless it was like max HP and max. Yeah. Health. Because that's the whole time, though, no, no, when you had the uh, Nidal King matchup, I thought for sure you were, like, uh, you were going to go for the Jet Punch, like, right there. But, um, by the way, I love the Wackaladios nickname on, on Tinkaton. It's a shame you get to hammer it. <laughs> so now that you're, like, out of playoffs, um, who do you think is the team to beat uh, of the ones remaining? Currently? Mm-hmm. Are way, Emu? Because... That's a team that currently hardly anyone has been able to stop. But another one to keep your eye out on for is Strike, in a sense where his team is great and coming down as the sixth seed, barely making it in. Um, he's very much a force to be reckoned with. That um, with Mon's like Lando team on his team. Um, he can be such a nuance mm-hmm. that can that other teams could come to um, really underestimate what he can actually do because um, his son team, I guess, is amazing. Oh, he's got he's so he's so he's got the regular turtle, and but then also like his son team, he's got Lando and then Ogre Pond Heart Slam, which is a really 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 strong um, offensive mon. Um. <laughs> I saw that you were able to fend it off with a uh, with Fabio like in another game, um, and you predicted well against like Frostmoth, and you did a Thunderbolt against it. So to talk more about just the team that uh, Prince mentioned, uh, they have Chiyu as their S minus Mega Mawile, um, Alomalolo, which is an extreme, and Tangrowth. So just that Regenerator core alone is uh, pretty annoying to deal with, and then they have Gligar. Um, which has a lot of great uh, defensive ability with its and the abilities of Eviolite even more so. Um, and Gujarasian. So there's a lot of defensive um, mons here. And then even like Miastic with the ability to uh, have pranks or thunder wave or screens, among other things. And Glamora, which can uh, add toxic spikes. So it can put a lot of pressure. Um, and certainly has. Very un- yeah. Um, were you, was there anything else you wanted to add more onto it, Prince? What I was saying? I think as well, the player himself just knows how to utilize the team so well in a way where he knows each of their strengths and weaknesses. In a sense where it doesn't matter how good your team is, once he finds a weakness, or she, once he or she finds a weakness, they will exploit it and could ultimately just end your game right then and there. Well, I guess this we will find out. I think tomorrow, um, if they're able to, uh, Friday, yeah, Friday, will be exciting game. Um, so Prince, how are you doing in like? Um, I know you're in like more than one league. Would you like to talk about like how you're doing in like other leagues? Other league? Well, currently, right now, I'm basically on a on a miniature like farewell tour in a sense where I've been playing draft for nearly two years now in a sense where it dates back from me playing back from in smog on draft to back when the ending state of the sword of sword and shield to right now Scarlet and Violet when the first all began. And so I've just been playing, playing and playing. However I do feel like it's time for me to at least take a step back from actually 
playing a whole bunch of different draft leagues because I still want to be able to still love the game. But I feel like if I continue on playing, um, I will just fall in love for it. So right now I'm playing on stepping back, do more um, off-season stuff. In a sense where if it's more like a gimmick or a meme, um, I'll join that. If not, I'll probably just, I'll probably look for like more mod jobs and leagues. But currently, the majority of seasons I'm playing are more like meme-ish. In a sense where I'm using Pokemon that um, aren't supposed to be used. Example, you don't use Terra Barrel. Did I just hear a Barrel? Terra option? That's... Okay. Yep, that... The barrel. Terra the barrel. Okay, well, I could, well, you know, I, I agree. I think that for those of you who don't get to do draft league and, or, and those who have, it's something that does take time and energy and requires a lot more than, like, just doing a regular tournament, which takes like four matches because you have to do a match every week, set up times with opponents and things like that. So it's perfectly understandable if it's like to want to take a little break. Um, I can definitely feel you on that. I'm glad that we're, we're doing a better job of having some time between because we'd rather have people come and rejoin for the future seasons. So, um, so I know you said like this is like your farewell tour. Um, or does this mean that you're going to retire the? The, the team name that you're using now and, and then start new when, whenever you feel like jumping back into again, are you going to just, are going to keep that same team name criminal Kirby's? Um, I feel that it's basically as well going to be a farewell to criminal Kirby's. And when I do eventually come back, it's going to be more of a rebranding, but also still keeping the same, um, part that came with it because for me i love kirby and that logo that you see there i found it on instagram and decided to take it for myself shout out to that person on instagram hope you get your credit <laughs> thank you kerbo for me like the final um when i do come back the team is mainly just gonna probably be more of like a legacy team where mm -hmm. i'm gonna try to not not only adding things new that I'm planning on implementing um, into like new strategies or new ways I want to play, mm -hmm. but as well as just trying to keep the best that non. So I've had various logo changes. Mm -hmm. So I want to more find a way where I can implement something with all of them, but also include something new. Well, I hope you're able to work out your idea and execute it to the way you like it um so i have like a, maybe just two more questions left so this way you can before you wrap up um so how do you feel about your experience here over in a draft rig um i know that you know draft league is something that we try to like make as fun as possible we uh introduced uh, like some more streaming events this past season and we try to you know keep things uh friendly but also competitive so the for me, my experience with um, draft rig, or as I originally um, joined, known as Spirit Pillar, for me, um, that was mainly as well as more in the starting ways of I was looking for more draft leagues to join. Right now, I, during that time, I had spirit more like a drought where a bunch of leagues had just are in the middle of their season. No one. Well, thankfully for those leagues, no one was dropping out. And so I was just sitting there and I was looking at all the matches and I was like, I really want to get out of the fun. And so for me, I just started joining draft servers left and right, seeing, okay, what can I find that would make it fun for me? But also where in a sense where I'm able to use everything. Because I love that next one. So, of course, I stumbled upon, um, of course, right now, Draft Break. And y'all, you guys had some, you guys were looking for someone, um, I believe it was in the Reggie Rock division. Someone had currently dropped, and you guys were looking for 
substitute. So I reached out first to um, Austin. I first reached out to you, actually, um, looking if you were, if I was able to become the substitute. You allowed it, and then um, I just talked to this guy. And then once from that, everything happened. I became known to the server as Prince of Underworld. Yeah, I'm glad you've been able to like participate, and I I hope you've been having fun. It's been, it's cool to like see Mega Ambrose, Fabio in action. I love I love that mon, and uh, I think I've, we we've played like a battle once or twice, not in draft league, but we've had fun a fun battle. I think, um, I think in the Ryder Cup, I think was where we fought, fought too. Um, so is um, is there anything you want to you want want to share more about yourself to uh, people who don't really know too much about you? Um, me personally, uh, I'm mainly just the guy who's mainly out here for the fun of trying out new things, no set style. My, my model is basically, in a sense, simple but stupid, and do whatever feels right to you, use your instinct, and just have fun, because if you're not having fun, there's no point in doing what you do. Um, I guess another thing would be, um, come these next two weeks of playoffs, I will destroy every single Darren that has challenged me. All right, that's that's a good declaration. Um, I know we have to set up ours. Um, maybe next week we'll do ours. And I think I think you started building with the Senda. I think right. I think or Boss Baby, uh, one or the other. You started building. I'm not sure. I've challenged too many people. To <laughs> what? Too many people. I've gone on a rant thing. You just heard me say that I will beat every single. I know. Uh, here. Now YouTube has this in their records. There was just, just going to clip it. I would get six owed by a worm a damn by five. <laughs> It could happen. <laughs> we'll see. Either way, either way, it's matches against Pi are are extremely fun. Like I, I don't, I haven't gotten to fight Pi in a long time because um, I'm not in the same league, and then um, I haven't done as many competitive events. But it's always a fun match when when I fight Pi. Um, so look, I definitely look forward to any of them that get done within the next like two weeks between now and whenever the season, new season ends. The only reason I challenged Pi, I specifically said. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, not gonna lie, I want to face the worm, madam. Yep, that's yeah, a perfectly good that's reason. How I, that's how I started this because I remember seeing, because I also kind of took inspiration from that same worm, madam. Yeah. Um, in my draft match against the Rift Raiders, because it was a quiver dance. Red oh yeah, match. you did. Yes. So I was there watching on Happy Hour. Make sure to watch it every Friday. And once I saw that, I was like, I have to implement it. I, Red Car is such a good move on it. So I just slapped down my Hitsillion Electro, gave it some bulk, added leech speed on it, and then, hey, I have one of ten counters to that Theropagos. It was a brilliant play. I, I was thinking to myself, like, Pi's got something cooked up in my mind, like, is it Red Car? It's got, it could be Red Card. And then the Red Card happens. Like, He's one. Of, he's he's great. Pi is Pi is one of our favorites. I'm I'm sorry, Pi. You don't get to stay alive in Premier League, but either way, you're still you're still a fan favorite for for me and for other people. I'm sure you got your emoji. So, um, and so my last question is: anything you want to say to your fans, the Criminal Kirby's, um, as you uh, end this season? Um, I doubt I have any fans, but just to anyone watching. Um, I hope that if you somehow seen one of my matches, hope that you had fun just seeing me personally just do what I thought seemed best, whether it's good and wrong. Me being surprised that a history of electro can live a plus two vacuum wave, um, using a physical and pro set, doing it, um, using Endure, Hitmon, Lee, all those crazy sets. I hope that at least during one, 
one of my matches, it at least brought you a smile to your face and showed you why Jurassic League is so much fun. Thank you, Prince, for joining us. Um, we look forward to more matches here or else or elsewhere. Um, and uh, thanks again. We uh, hope to look forward to our battle. We'll we'll, fi we'll figure it out, and uh, we'll be sure to stream it out for other people to watch. All right. Thank you, DJ.